If you look at today's weather, you'd be excused for thinking it isn't great weather for scuba diving. But you probably also know the expression, there isn't any bad weather, only the wrong clothes. And that's rather fitting for today's episode. Welcome to Wet Souls, my name is Nick, and in today's episode, we'll look at dry suit diving. What is a dry suit, why to dive it, and how? When it comes to dry suit and dry suit diving, there seems to be an air of mystique around the topic, especially with those divers among us who haven't had the chance of trying a dry suit yet, thinking it is something extremely complicated reserved to technical divers and professionals only, when effectively a dry suit is just designed to keep us warm in cold weather conditions. And for us who love diving, it turns it into a very versatile and a great tool that allows us to dive all year round and in many different locations. But you shouldn't be put off by thinking that a dry suit is only something designed for ice conditions. As a matter of fact, diving dry is all about comfort and there's plenty of people that choose to dive a dry suit in say 23 Celsius. Well, it isn't obligatory for you to take a course when you dive dry. It is recommended to go and see an instructor and take a dry suit specialty because diving dry actually comes with a bit of a learning curve and there are skills and practices that you need to master in order to be able uh, to be safe in the water and that's best done with a professional who can actually teach evaluate and correct you and you can practice in a safe and controlled environment before taking your new equipment uh, to say the galapagos but let's take a look at how a dry suit works. And basically differently than a neoprene suit, which retains a tiny layer of water between your skin and the suit and that uh, your body warms up. A dry suit is completely ambientally sealed, so there isn't any contact between your body and the water. What you have is then a layer of air which your body warms up. Water tightness of the suit is guaranteed by the watertight material the suit is made of, and further tightness is guaranteed by seals. We have seals around our wrist and around our neck. These are typically made of silicone, latex or neoprene. Your feet are generally integrated into the suit with um, some uh, integrated boots, which most suits have. If that's not the case, what you get are some watertight socks, which are integrated into the suit. Your feet go in those and then you wear some separate boots called rock boots. So is a dry suit enough to keep you warm? No, the dry suit itself isn't enough to keep you warm. What makes all the difference is what you wear underneath your suit. But before we start talking about underlayers, let's have a look at what type of suits there are. Broadly speaking, there's two types. We have membrane or laminate and neoprene or crash neoprene and both have their advantages and disadvantages. The membrane suit or laminate suit, like the name says, is made of different layers of fabric, two, three, so bilaminate or trilaminate, and they're compressed into one membrane. The advantages of this type of suit, it is very light and easy to transport. They dry very fast, they're easy to get into, they can use them in warm water too by diving them with less undergarment. And as the material has practically no positive buoyancy, you can dive them with less weight. What are the cons? Well, like a soft shell jacket, they offer absolutely no insulation by themselves. So you're gonna need more undergarment if you want to dive them. The material is a little more fragile than the neoprene ones. So if you scrape them somewhere, there is the possibility of damage. And generally they tend to be a little more expensive. On the other hand, we have neoprene or crashed neoprene. These are, well, suits made of thicker neoprene, typically seven to eight millimeter, and the crushed version is actually thick neoprene, seven to eight millimeter, pressed down to three to four millimeter neoprene. What are the advantages of this type of suit? They are more durable and sturdy than the membrane suits. Neoprene being stretchy actually makes them more flexible in the fit. Some people say that they prefer diving neoprene over membrane. And the thicker neoprene actually offers more insulation than the membrane. What are the cons? Well, they are bulkier and heavier to carry around. Some people say that they feel more cumbersome in the water as well, and they do need more weight to dive because the neoprene is inherently more positively buoyant. Now, which one is better? Well, 
That is a question that generates eternal debate among divers because there are people that say neoprene is better, there's others that say membrane is better. What it really boils down to is sheer comfort and that depends on you. And it also depends upon what task you need the suit for. Let's say you're an instructor teaching and scraping about a lot. Well, then probably neoprene or crash neoprene is better for you. If you are a traveling diver who needs to travel light or perhaps a technical diver, and wants more comfort, then the membrane suit is probably the better choice for you. As a word of advice, consider a dry suit as an investment because it's going to set you back between one to three thousand dollars and it isn't a very good idea to just run into a shop and buy any old dry suit hanging around. A dry suit is all about comfort and the comfort comes from the fit. So what you should try to do is to actually understand the different types of dry suits there are, diving them, that's the best way of doing this, and then making your choice according to your needs. Another good reason actually uh, to be part of a uh, dive club or, or a dive center is that there you often get the chance of actually trying the equipment and diving the suits before buying them and making your mind up. And consider getting a bespoke one, so made to measure because even though it isn't always necessary, if you have a suit that fits you perfectly, regardless of what type of material the suit is gonna be, your diving is definitely gonna benefit greatly from that. And also remember that if you get a bespoke suit, the great thing is you can fully customize your suit so you can choose how many pockets you want, where you want them, you can choose the type of zipper you want, front or back, you can choose the seals and the material these are made of, uh, you can choose what type of valve, what height, the valve has and with so many factors you can even choose the color of your stitching choose life choose a job choose a career so let's have a look at the components of a dry suit this is a dry suit you can see you can get them in very pretty colors like this one and different materials what we have here is a trilaminate as opposed to mine which is crashed neoprene there are three seals on a dry suit we have two seals right here on the wrist. Oh, okay. And we have one seal right here on the neck. These can typically be made of latex or silicone or neoprene, depending on the model. We have a zipper. This is a watertight zipper. You can have one in the front, like in this case, this is a front donning option, or like mine, you can have a back donning option. But this one, obviously, it's easier to get in and out fast if you need. Uh, to get out because you want to go and pee, that's a very fast uh, <laughs> option for you. It is a bit more difficult with the back donning one. And the other thing which we have, the dry suit being a uh, effectively airtight bag, as we know, air changes its volume as you dive deeper. You need a air inlet valve right here in the front to equalize your chute and on the side, typically on the left arm, you have an air outlet valve, which uh, will allow you to let the air out of the suit as it expands while you go up. When it comes to dry suit and dry suit diving, the most important part of the dry suit to stay warm is the underlayer. And having a good underlayer makes all the difference between being cold or nice and toasty during a dive. Technically, we can wear whatever we want underneath a dry suit. And while stylistically wearing something like an evening dress for a lady or a tuxedo for a man would be an incredible choice, it wouldn't be in terms of staying warm. And to understand why that is, we need to understand how an underlayer works. And basically what an underlayer does is it traps a layer of air inside its fabrics and very much like a sleeping bag our body warms this up now there is a lot of producers of underlayers and undergarment out there and while i do not want to pluck any specific uh, brand there is a great article by a company called dui that's diving unlimited international and they are mercedes-benz when it comes to dry suit and dry suit diving um, and they've written a great piece on undergarments and the uh, different type 
of materials used so go and check that out and by the way if you are in the market for a dry suit do budget in the undergarment and the underlayers as well because they are basically an integral part of your suit and uh, one uh, doesn't work without the other now we've finished diving we're ready to go home uh, how do we take care of our dry suit and how do we look after it correctly well let's go home and find out We've just come back from diving. I've laid the suit down here. Now we're going to take a look at how to clean it, maintain and store it. Typically after your dive, you do this at the dive center, or if you have a garden, you can do that out in the garden. I live in a very small flat in a big city, and even here, it's not a problem to do it. And now what we want to do is we want to get a moist sponge. And before we're going to wash the dry suit down, we're going to sponge off the zipper nicely to make sure we get any sand or debris left on it off. Right, in order to wash the dry suit, I've prepped the shower. I use what I have. I close the zipper up here and then take some lukewarm water from the shower and basically just shower down, down the dry suit both back as well as front. Shower down every part of the dry suit nicely, get all dirt and debris off, of course give the boots a good clean and then once you're done you can leave your dry suit hanging leave it hanging until it's dry outside. Once that happened, open up the zipper. And what you want to do now is really let the, the moisture come out. At this point, usually I just move my dry suit to a different and better drying place. Of course, provided that um, it is dry outside. Right then, I've had this hanging here for a couple of days now with the zipper open, making sure I reverse it every now and again just for that humidity to come out. If you can, get yourself a hanger for dry suits where you can hang them by the feet upside down because that really speeds up the drying process. And before we put this baby to storage, there is a couple of things we need to do with the zipper and the seals. Now what we have here is the zipper of the dry suit, that's the most fragile bit and that's something that needs taken care of before we can store the dry suit away. I have some wax here which is special dry suit wax and we're going to apply that to the top and to the bottom part of the zipper, all over the zipper nicely and then we can close the zipper as such and open it again do that a couple of times just to make sure that your zipper is working well. Right now before storage we need to do one thing with the seals, we need to tap them down lightly. You can use special towel for dry suits or you can get some powder. It needs to be powder without petroleum though because that can damage the seals. Add some talc gently, rub it around. Then do the same thing on the other one and on the neck. Don't put a lot inside the neck because otherwise that's going to land inside the suit and it's going to create a lot of gunk. You don't want that. Before we saw it, put the seals in as such. I have my dry dry suit laid down nicely on the floor and now I'm going to fold it for storage. Mine will be stored downstairs in the cellar hanging. If you don't have that option then this is the way to do it. Zipper. If you have a plastic zipper, close the plastic zipper. If you have a brass zipper, leave that open. If you have a covering zipper, then close the covering zipper. But the brass zipper should stay open. Now let's take a look at the folding. Fold at knee height, one time, second time, get the boots together as such, fold again and then move it over. Now we have a nice and compact package, that's it. Press down if there is a little bit of air inside it will go out. Seals, they are sticking out, press them in like that and fold the arms and 
the seal goes in as well and then just fold the arms make sure that your zipper stays as straight as possible and that's it ready to store well ladies and gents that's it for today thank you for watching this episode on dry suit diving hopefully you enjoyed it if you did leave us a thumbs up if you have any questions about the topic let me know in the comments below and if you haven't yet subscribe to the channel as always stay well keep your soles wet and see you next time